welcome to a new episode of Brewing with 50 Bucks. Stefan here, coming to you from the General Warfare Headquarters. Today's the day Kaldheim gets released to everybody. The long-awaited Viking-themed set is upon us, with all 33 new commanders and god cards. It's safe to say that most Magic players, myself included, are super excited to build and add these new cards to our commander decks. And so, today I'll be discussing one of those new cards from Kaldheim. Today's episode is all dedicated to Sarolf, the Realm Eater. If you haven't already, I briefly described the build of the deck. You can go check that video out right about now. So, let's get into it. Sarolf is a 3-3 for 1, black and green, and has the abilities whenever a permanent opponent controls is put to, into a graveyard from the battlefield, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on Sarolf Realm Eater. And at the beginning of your upkeep, if Sarolf has one or more plus one, plus one counters on it, you may remove all of them. If you do, exile each other non-land permit with a converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of counters removed this way. I'd say this would be a very strong Voltron build. However, uh, with the second ability on Sarolf, you're not really going to be having a lot of non-land permanents on the field because you're going to be board wiping with Sarolf all the time. So. Let's try to let's try to manufacture this with a $50 budget and try to build up to its strengths. Let's start with our sacrifice cards. Now, these cards are here to clear a path for Sarolf to attack. So starting off, we have Liliana's Triumph with each opponent sacrifices a creature. If you control a Liliana's Planeswalker, each opponent also discards a card. There is no Liliana uh, Planeswalker in this deck, so this is mostly used for the sacrifice ability. Now you have Mire in Misery. Each opponent sacrifices a creature or enchantment. Same, ab same ability, except it also gives you the option to sacrifice an enchantment, or your opponents to sacrifice enchantment if they don't have a creature on the field. Now, these three next cards, Demon's Disciple, Fleshbag Marauder, and Merciless Executioner, are pretty much the exact same. There are three ones for th two and a black, Whenever they enter the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature. Next one up is Playcrafter. Playcrafter is the exact same thing, except they can sacrifice a Plateswalker, and whoever can't discards a card. Same converted mana cost, but it also has one more toughness. And you also have Slum Reaper, which is the exact same thing as all four of those aforementioned cards. However, it's four mana for a 4-2. Now, Soul Shatter is basically having everybody sacrifice a creature or Planeswalker, kind of like Playcrafter was doing before. However, it's with the highest converted mana cost among creatures and Planeswalkers they control. So the highest creature cost is going to be Nyx immediately. Next, we have the Eldest Reborn, which is the first saga we will discuss on this video series, but this is the only saga we will be focusing on this video itself. It's four and a black for an enchantment. Its first ability is each opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker, which is exactly what we want to be doing. The next mode is each opponent discards a card, which, you know, pretty much helpful. And the third uh, mode on this is you put a target creature or planeswalker card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control, which is very helpful, especially if, if you're not already exiling all their creatures, you can also steal one of their creatures from their graveyard. Tribute to the Wild is a green sacrifice card, except it makes your opponents sacrifice an artifact or an enchantment instead of just creatures. Virtus's Maneuvers is two and a black for, and you get to choose your friends or foes. For every foe, you make them sacrifice a creature, and for every friend, they return a creature card from the graveyard to their hand. Most of the time, you're going to be choosing foes because you want to be your only friend in this game, clearly. And Vona's Hunger is everybody sacrifices a creature, and if you have the city's blessing, each opponent sacrifices half their creatures he or she controls rounded up. Next is our removal, which will rid our opponents of any hope and value. Our first card is Barrier Breach, which lets you exile up to three target enchantments and gives you cycling. So if you don't have any enchantments on the field yet you need a new draw, you can always cycle this. I personally like using cycle cards because if you don't need a certain card in that certain instant, you can discard it and draw a card instead. Except, in this case, it's helpful to exile enchantments, especially ones that are holding you down. Next is Beast Within, that lets you destroy a target permanent, and its controller creates a 3-3 green beast. Curdle, which is destroy a target creature, and put a menace counter on a creature you control. Now, these ability counters are going to be super important later when we go over all the ability counters. However, in this instance, it's helpful to destroy a target creature, even though it has a little bit more high-costed than most kill spells in the game, and in this deck. 
Next, you have Broken Bond, which is destroy target artifact or enchantment, and it puts an additional land you have in your hand onto the battlefield. So, extra value on top of it. Even though it's sorcery speed, it's still very You're basically destroying an artifact or enchantment and putting a land onto the field for two mana. Casualties of War is an amazing card in this deck, considering it lets you destroy up to five permanents and give Sauron plus, uh, five plus one plus one counters, giving him enough to wipe the board if he so needs to for five. Cost of Caterpillar is in the deck as a one drop that lets you destroy a target artifact or enchantment by sacrificing the Caterpillar. Really good, especially uh, if it's a CDH card, so why not add a little bit of extra value and a little bit of extra, you know, spice in this deck. Death Sprout is a fun card, destroy target creature card that lets you put a basic land onto the battlefield tapped. Gaze of Granite is another fun little board wipe. Same ability like Ra Sarolf, except it destroys each non-land permanent with converted mana cost X or less. So this might be a little iffy if you, if you have Sarolf on the field already. However, if you don't, then you can go right ahead and destroy each non-land permanent this way. Mini wipe, why not? Next, you have Hagro Mauling, which is another destroy target creature. It's a little bit more high costed again. However, this is also a modal DFC card, which lets you flip to Hagra B Blood Pit, which is basically just a little land that you can add a black if you need the extra mana. Heartless Act is a really fun, funny card too, which lets you either choose to destroy target creature with no counters on it, or you get to remove up to three counters from target creature. So. You either get to destroy a creature, or you get to make something weaker, or remove counters on whatever creature that's on the field. Not going to be Sarolf, that's for sure. Hex is a fun card, especially for six mana, destroy six target creatures. You're going to be getting six plus one plus one counters on Sarolf, and you're going to be huge when you cast Hex, and you get rid of all those creatures, so why not add a, something that'll spot remove th six other creatures. Next you have Swift End, which is the adventure mode on Murderous Rider. Swift End is destroy target creature or planeswalker and you lose two life. However, it could also be cast for its regular cost for Murderous Rider, which is a lifelink, and when it dies, you put it on the bottom of your library. So you get to destroy a creature or a planeswalker, and then you could play it afterwards for its regular cost and gain some life back. Nature's Claim is a great card. I don't need to say too much about it. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Its controller gains four life for one green. It's really good. I put this in almost every green deck I play. Putrefy is one and Golgari, destroy target artifact or creature, another good budget staple. What more can I say about it? Reclamation Stage is also a little staple card, destroying target artifact or enchantment for three mana. Tragic Slip is target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. It may not seem good, but when you're just when you're blowing up creatures and when you're destroying other creatures, the morbid ability turns on and giving something minus 13, minus 13 until end of turn is really, really powerful. Last, you have Wilt, which is one and a green to destroy target artifact or enchantment, and you get to cycle it for two. Now let's talk about our plus one plus one counters that'll fuel up Sarol for his massive wipes. Our first one is Ancient Animus, which will put a plus one plus one counter on Sarol, and it lets you fight a creature. You put a plus one plus one counter on something, you fight something, they die, you get another plus one plus one counter on Sarol. So you're effectively killing a creature, and you're putting two plus one plus one counters on Sarol. Next is Hydra's Growth, which when it comes into the play, it puts a plus one plus one counter on a enchanted creature, and on your upkeep, you double those plus one plus one counters. In the event that you want to wipe something fast, you put this on next to upkeep, you're basically at double your plus one plus one counters, and then you can remove them and wipe a field however you see fit. Now, Inscription of Abundance is a really great card. It's very versatile, especially with its kicker cost. Namely, you can ch choose it for its one, but if you pay kicker, which is ultimately five mana, you get to choose any number. You get to either put two plus one plus one counters on target creature. Target player gains X life, where X is the greatest power among creatures they control. Or, slash and, target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. Most of the time, you'll be paying this for its kicker cost, because that's extra value for you. you you're getting two plus one plus one counters on something. You get to fight another creature, and you get to gain life based on Sarov's power. Next, we have Invigoration Surge, which puts a plus one plus one counter on target creature, and then you double the counters. So, same thing like Inscription of Abundance, except on an instant. In the event of a damage-based removal or damage-based wipe, you just double the plus one plus one counters on Sarov, and he'll be able to survive it. Now, Scale the Heights is probably the most versatile card in this deck, considering it hits every single facet you want with this card. You get to put a plus one plus one counter on Sarov, you gain two life, you could put an additional land into the field, and you get to draw a card. So, you're ramping, you're drawing, you're putting a plus one plus one counter, you're fueling Sarolf, 
and you get to gain some extra life on top of it. That's just incredible value for three mana. Solidarity of Heroes is you get to double plus one plus one counters on each creature you target with it with first strive. Most of the time, you're only going to be using this for Sarolf. Most, most of the time, meaning all the time, considering he's the only one in this deck who uses plus one plus one counters for themselves. Unexpected Fangs is plus one plus one counter and gives you a life clean counter on target creature. Once again, this is another ability counter that you get to put on Saurolf, giving him lifelink. Last one gave him Menace, so giving him Menace and then giving him lifelink is really strong considering you're getting gaining life and you're going to be giving him great aversion against it. Lastly, we have Vastwood Surge. It's ramp, and if you pay the kicker, you get to put two plus one plus one counters on each sorrow if you control. You're basically getting an explosive vegetation on top of adding two plus one plus one counters on sorrow for eight mana. Normally, you'd be only paying it for the ramp, but if you have the mana to, to put in for the two plus one plus one counters, it's going to be worth it for sorrow. Now we're going to talk about the keywords, giving sorrow the necessities to prevail. You have Titanoth Rex, which you'll never play on the field, you're mostly going to be cycling it to give a target Sarolf Trample, which this is the, as I mentioned in my last video, this is the important keyword that I thought he was going to have on the, on him, because giving him extra damage and him dealing, dealing excess damage to hit your opponents is amazing. You have Slippery Bog Bonder, which for Flash and Hexproof gives target Sarolf Hexproof, which is another great aversion and can mitigate any targeted removal, bounce, or any kind of target ability against Sarolf. Next, you have Daring Fiend Bonder, which most of the time you're going to try to get him in your graveyard, exile him from the graveyard, and put an indestructible counter on Sarolf. If you have indestructible and hexproof, he is pretty much going to be staying on the board unless you have some form of sack abilities on the board. All right, so as you've noticed, the lighting's different and my attire has changed. Yes, I forgot to record two little parts the first of which is our draw spells this is going to help us get more advantage over our opponents and get more stuff to disrupt their boards and their progress altogether our first card is dusted legion zealot lets you draw an extra card for at the cost of one life for one and a black next is hunter's insight which is choose target creature you control whenever that creature deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker this turn draw that many cards. So say Sarolf is going in undefended. You play Hunter's Insight, you draw the very minimum four cards at the very maximum. Who knows how many you can be drawing in one turn. Next is Inspiring Call, which is draw a card for each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it, Sarolf, and those creatures gain indestructible until end of turn. Very strong card considering people are going to try to disrupt our boards and try to disrupt our plans. Yet with this, you get one, a card draw effect, and two, you basically make Sarolf indestructible for a turn. What more can you ask for? Phyrexian Rager is the exact same thing as Dusk Legion Zealot for one more mana. Draw a card and lose one life. Breed the Bones is the same converted mana cost as Phyrexian Ranger, yet it's scry two, then draw two, then lose two. So you get to manipulate the top cards of your deck, which ones you want to draw at that instance. Draw those cards and then lose two life at that as a small cost to this. Return of the Wild Speaker is a really strong card that's come out recently. You get to choose one effect for four and a green. Draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control. And non-human creatures you control get plus three, plus three till end of turn. You're mostly going to be using this for its card draw ability, considering Sarolf will get super massively huge. At that point, if, even if um, you don't have anything to make Sarolf indestructible, you draw those cards based off Sarolf's power, and you're way ahead of your opponents in, their, in terms of hand size. And Sign in Blood is two black for target player, draws two cards and loses two life. It's another black budget staple, gets you advantage and gets you a little bit ahead of your opponents card-wise. And next is our indestructible cards. This is going to keep Sarolf on the field for an extra turn while we, we board wipe and we swing in for big, massive, large, huge. First one is Mortal's Resolve. Target creature gets plus one, plus one, and gains indestructible end of turn. Easy enough, you can pump Sarolf for one, and you give him indestructible as a cost in the event that somebody's going to block him or there's a board wipe that or targeted removal that will try to get rid of Sarolf. Then you have Oblivion's Hunger for one and a black. Target creature you control gets, gains indestructible till end of turn, and you draw a card if that creature has a plus one, plus one counter on it. Again, not only giving uh, Sarolf indestructible, but it's giving you extra value as to drawing a card. 
It's best to use when Sarov already has a plus one, plus one counter on him, but most of the time when he's going to be on the field, he's going to have that plus one, plus one counter on him. So you're going to be drawing that extra card while giving him indestructible. Without weakness is one on the black, target creature get you control gains indestructible till end of turn, and you get to cycle it away for two mana. So you get to interchange this card for another card if you don't see it necessary. In the interim of the game, most of the time you're going to be using this for its indestructible ability. And last is withstand death for one green. Target creature is indestructible this turn. So you're basically giving Starolf indestructible for a turn. If somebody's trying to mass board wipe, trying to destroy him, trying to remove him in some form, you just get pay one green, give him indestructible. Now let's head over to fight, which is our second best ways of removing our creatures. And with fight, we have two other cards to talk about next to uh, Ancient Animus and Inscription of Abundance. We have Call Me Ambush, which lets target Starolf fight another target creature you don't control. And it's another modal DFC, turning it into Call Me Territory, which lets you tap for a green. And we also have Ram Through, which lets target Starolf deal damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. And if it has trample, excess damage is dealt to the creature's controller instead. So you basically kill a creature and you deal the excess to your opponent. What more can you ask for for a very strong commander who gets pumped up? Now, we have two win cons in this deck. One is a combat strategy and the other one is not so much. Our first one is Gerard Golgari Lichlord. Mostly you're not going to be using him for his for any other ability except his fling ability. The one in Golgari, sacrifice another creature, each opponent loses life equal to the sacrificed creature's power. So ultimately you want Sarolf to get stupidly big, so you just use this the fling ability and each opponent loses X life, hopefully killing them in the instance. And second we have Tainted Strike, which is a combat trick. You give Sarolf Trample, you give him Menace, you give him everything, and then you just throw on Tainted Strike and, well, you kill somebody with Infect which is always a fun way to kill your opponents, infecting them to death. We have a bit of aversion to help protect Sarolf. For some of the aversion, we have Blossoming Defenses, giving target Sarolf plus two, plus two, and Hexproof until end of turn. Pretty standard card considering it's one mana and helps give Sarolf Hexproof if he doesn't have it already, or just pumps him up if anything. Next, we have Sheltering Word, which gives target Sarolf Hexproof until end of turn, and you gain the life equal to its toughness. So since Sarolf is a 3-3, you're basically gaining as much life from his toughness as you would be from his power. And we la lastly have Vines of Fastwood, which is another little sneaky card. Basically, for one mana, you can give him Hexproof. And for Kicker 1, you give him plus 4, plus 4 till end of turn. This way, you can get in for that big swing. We have one Tutor in this deck, and it's Diabolic Tutor. Again, this is a budget build, so Diabolic Tutor is the best we can do. Get, letting Tutor up a card, putting it into your hand. We have a few pieces of ramp in this deck to get you to know where you need to be, and that's way ahead of your opponents. So first off, we have Cultivate, which is a staple Greek card that everybody should have in their green decks. Search up two basic land cards, put one in the battlefield and one in your hand. Battlefield tapped, I should say. Next we have Farseek, which is another standard green card. You get to search for a plains, island, swamp, or mountain and put it into the battlefield tap. Basically doesn't search for forests, but since we're playing two colors, you get that extra swamp on the battlefield. Harrow, which lets you sacrifice a land and then put two basic lands onto the battlefield, untapped, it says, and shuffle your library. Then we have Migration Path, which is another Fastwood Surge, except it doesn't have Kicker, it has Cycling 2, and Rampant Growth, which is another staple green card, lets you search for a basic land and put into the battlefield tapped. And lastly, we have our land base, which is the most important part of the deck. Now, our land base consists of a Blighted Woodlands, which is a tap for a colorless, and three in green to tap, sacrifice it to Fastwood Surge or Migration Path, get two basic lands and put them onto the battlefield tapped. We have Bonders Enclave, which lets you tap for a colorless, but three in a tap, draw a card, activate this ability only if you control a creature with power four or greater. Most of the time, Sarolf is going to be at four power or even more, and that way you're going to be drawing more cards. Then we have Rogue's Passage, which gives target Sarolf unblockable until end of turn. But then we have Myriad Landscape, which is another Blighted Woodland. Let's you, it comes into play tap, tap for a colorless, or you tap two and tap it to, and sacrifice it. Search for two basic lands that share a land type, put them on the battlefield tap, and then shuffle your library. Then we have the standard Terramorphic Expanse and Evolving Wilds, tap to sack to search for a basic land. We're running 16 swamps and 13 forests in this deck. And that's how you build a Voltron World Ending Wolf. Now, based on our $50 budget, we're slightly over at $50, $53.03. 
slightly over by three dollars, but it's not gonna it's not gonna burden anybody. And let me ask you this, and to our listeners, to our viewers, is how would you build Sarolf? Let me know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more MTG content. Content I post every Friday, and we have our social medias linked in the description below. That's it for me today. Go enjoy your Kaldheim swag, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.